Welcome back to the big show. So, you know, Thanksgiving is a time to gather with family and friends, be grateful, mm -hmm. and share a very traditional meal together. So some of us have relaxing, easy Thanksgivings, and then some of us have challenging Thanksgivings. Conflict can be really common during the holiday. Dr. Karen Ryan with Nystrom & Associates is joining us here with more. Dr. Ryan, we're always so happy that you're here. I think you could have your own therapy show. You don't even need <laughs> oh, us, but we're I very happy, happy that you're No, here. you don't need yeah. us. Happy holidays. I want too. to be with you. <laughs> we yeah. love yes. it. Yes. All right, let's talk about Thanksgiving in general. Why mm -hmm. does the conflict arise? Yeah. Like, what, are people just stuffing it down all year long and then letting it out <laughs> when the turkey comes out? What's going on yeah. here? Well, holidays are lovely, right? Yeah. They're positive, we wanna gather, but they're also a time when there's a lot of us gathering together. There's some of us that not gather, might not gather on a regular basis. We're typically getting families together, so sometimes there's sibling rivalry, and there's the old family dynamic. So there can be resentments about who does the most? Who pays for the most? Yeah. Who's in charge of mm. this? Who's too bossy? Who's too type A? And all these things that are in every single family pattern, right? But then they can come up in holidays because it's a little more stress. We have some expectations there. There can be more drinking or substances involved. And so it just kind of cr can create this kind of... Pressure cooker. Pressure cooker. I know. It yeah. seems like in this day and age, though, that everybody wants to do the same thing. We all want to get together yeah. and not have these conflicts and not yeah. have these arguments. I just kind of yep. wish everybody was sort That's of our goal today, right? on, yes. on the same page. So does yeah. it help? to really know, to like do a little bit of a scouting yeah. report before you even go. Like, yes. do, yeah. do you need to have that sort of like mental, like, okay, who's gonna be there yeah. and kind of gear yourself up yeah. for what may happen? Yes, that's the first thing I would recommend that you do is to prepare for what you're walking into. Mm. So really thinking about what is this gonna be like? How formal is it gonna be? How many people are gonna be there? How long can I expect to be there? What are the dynamics and the rules about is the football game on or not? You know, how long will we sit at the table for? And again, it's not that you can predict everything, but if it helps you have a mindset of like walking what am I walking into what are the dynamics like how do I get along well with who might be a challenge for me what are my triggers so it really is helpful to think about it right so that's the first step is think about what am I walking into and then you kind of set an intention for how you want to behave because yes. it's not like you can set an intention for how everybody no. else is gonna Correct. behave they're yeah. they're wild cards yes Exactly. And so the goal is to really focus on yourself and what you can control. And what I invite all of us to do, myself included, is this before going in, now you've got that scouting report, asking yourself, what do I want to, how do I want to behave? What is my mindset going to be like walking in? Do I want to have a relaxing and warm holiday? Mm -hmm. Do I want to go in and express all of my opinions and not care what anybody else thinks, <laughs> right? Do I want to go in and be grateful that we, I have somebody who's making this meal and I'm contributing, or am I going to go in and complain about what's not how I like it or in the traditional way I like it? Wow. Um, as a host, right, am I, is my mindset to make sure everything is perfect and nobody gets out of line and it's just right and controlled, or is my goal to make sure that, or is my goal that everybody has fun and engages and they feel connected at the end of the night? So really, when you ask yourself that, you can hear it. It's like different. You're like, ooh. It makes you kind of check yourself before mm -hmm. you walk in. Of like, how am I going to hold myself accountable and how do I want to behave? at this Thanksgiving this is gathering. Good. So it is, uh, it's fascinating that in this time, we're always asked to like be thankful and like think about other people, right? Yeah. But you're saying on the front end, be very introspective yes. about yourself yes. first. Think about, mm -hmm. check yourself first, know what you want to do before maybe you, you go out there and present yourself to other people. Yeah. And I'm gonna guess part of that, as you mentioned it earlier, is usually these things happen when substances are involved. Yeah. Alcohol, other things. Like, yep. Putting a limit on yourself is probably a good idea. It like, like really I'm going to go to this idea. party and have like two drinks. Exactly. And what is my mindset? What is how? What is my approach to drinking or using at this gathering? Right. I have that image of like playing nice in the sandbox. So you're going with this mindset of, I want to get along with people, and I know that if I drink a little more, I'm gonna might be more impulsive. I might be more likely to say things that are going to cause a conflict. Do I want to do that? Yeah. And the answer most likely is no. I hope, we hope it's no, right? That no, we don't want to go into a holiday with the goal of having conflict. So yeah, being thoughtful about how many substances you use or how many drinks you have when mm -hmm. you're there is it helpful. Piece. How do you get into a mindset when it comes to grief? I think a lot of people struggle with the holidays because they're missing what used to be. And maybe they're missing someone. And those yeah. are all like really valid things to feel. Yeah. But at the same time, you don't want the fact that you're missing what once was to ruin what you have right now. Yeah, and I think it's it's lovingly really asking yourself, can I grieve and can I miss and can I be sad and long for what was and celebrate what is? Yeah. 
Right, and celebrate is kind of a hard work. I don't feel like I can celebrate and grieve at the same time. And, and oftentimes we can get there. It, it is work, but it's recognizing what do I need to do to allow myself to feel sad? So maybe it's, do you need to do something alone? Or is there somebody in the family who will also understand that grief and feels a similar way and can process that with you? So mm -hmm. it can be a time where you take that time aside to honor those needs, mm -hmm. right, and then engage. So that's another key thing you can do is take breaks. So check in with yourself and say, do I need to take a walk, especially extended weekend gatherings? Yeah. Do I need, can I go watch a movie? Can I go play with a dog? Can I go play with a baby? Yeah. I'm going to go take an extra nap. So taking those breaks. And so it's really, again, it's that accountability of what do I need today? to help myself get through this, whether that's grief, whether that's a break from somebody that I have conflict with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I've, I've kind of found um, that's been helpful the last couple of years when we host, whether it's mm -hmm. you know Thanksgiving, holidays, whatever, having something to do outside of just gathering and eating and drinking. That's good. Yes. You know, having a game plan yeah. or like a trivia plan yeah. or doing Pictionary. Or Our bingo roller yeah. arrived yeah. The yesterday. Bingo roller. Yes. Like, yes. That's kind of a good way to break things up it, too, it right? It is 100%. So when you have your mind busy and you're doing something that's a shared activity, it's a way that decreases tension, it builds connection, oftentimes there's laughter, it's a shared activity. There's so many that you can do across all ages. So yeah, yeah. Pictionary, yep. you know. Um, Unless you're playing a game with a toddler and then they're going to ruin it <laughs> because they're going to wreck the game and they're going to be mad if they lose. Yep. And that, so then you let them win and you have one thing yeah. just for that. And yep. some toddlers are 60 years old. Thanks so much. Yeah, good to see you and happy Thanksgiving. All right, so Nystrom nice Associates provides care in the fields of psychiatry, psychology, family therapy, and more. We're going to post our contact information on TwinCitiesLive.com.